Hey guys, what's going on? It's Chris from Dream Media Home Theater. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about these little guys right back here. So these are the ELAC DBR62s, and these are the nice little bookshelves. You can also get these in a center channel as well as towers, but I'm going to talk about the bookshelves. I'm going to get into all that, and I'll do it right after the intro. Well, right, guys, so let's talk about these speakers. So behind me, I have the ELAC Debut Reference 62s. These are six and a half inch uh, mid-bass drivers with a one inch cloth dome tweeter. So with the six and a half inch driver, that one's going to be the Aramid type of driver as they call it. But whenever I look at it, it kind of looks like a, a, a glass type of composite driver. I'll show you guys a quick up, uh, you know, close up in a second here. But um, they go down to 44 Hertz, which is actually really, really impressive, you know, considering their size. And then they go way up to 35 kilohertz, which is astronomical, right? Uh, six ohm speakers, they're a two-way crossover, and then they have a nice little bit of front port right here on the front. I'll show you guys that right here. So check that out. So these are actually really, really nice speakers. So they're sold in pairs. I think the MSRP on these is like 600 for the pair, which is like nothing for, for what you're getting on these things. But uh, the, the bass that comes through on them, and you guys know I love bass. The bass, I, I, like, I, I, I put on big ones here from uh, Aerosmith, right? I have it on the Oppo 205 uh, going through some premium cables into the uh, audio control Maestro X9. And then, you know, the fronts are sent directly to these ELAC uh, debut reference speakers. So I put it on stereo direct. So it just basically just sends the signal as pure as possible without putting any processing, any crossovers or any of that other stuff, or even adding any subwoofers into the mix. Basically just sends all the juice to the front speakers and then what you get is what you get. So um, the purest uh, signal that came through there, I really, really enjoyed the overall sound signature that came out of these things. And again, you know, like whenever you're talking about speakers like this, cause I've seen speakers, you know, that are several hundreds of dollars to several thousands of dollars to tens of thousands. And the, the way that these sound, it just sounds like you're getting a lot more than just that price point. So um, I really liked the way that the bass came through on them. And like I was talking about, I put this CD on and then I was just even over in the other room, um, you know, just, just researching some, some facts and stuff like that. But I was over in the other room and on specific songs, I actually felt my chair shake and I wasn't playing it any, any crazy volumes or anything like that. And there wasn't any subwoofer in the mix cause it was on direct and it just shook my seat, which is actually really cool. Um, I wouldn't expect that from something this small and I wouldn't expect that, you know, being in the different room as well. But uh, overall, really, really enjoyed that. Uh, really, really heard some nice little bit of nuances here and I'll let you guys know about that in a second. But uh, right on Ragdoll, right at that beginning, whenever that kick drum goes, you really, really feel that kick drum and you hear it. You hear it and it sounds realistic. That's the whole thing with speakers, right? You don't wanna look at a speaker and realize that you're hearing a speaker. You wanna you know, have a speaker and kind of feel transformed. You wanna be able to understand that what does that thing actually sound like? And me being a drummer for several years, you know, I realized that there are specific sounds that make specific sounds. So like, like a kick drum. And if, if you're in the room with one, there's a very distinct way that it sounds. And there's a lot of air in the mixing whenever this thing was actually made. So that was really cool. I really, really like that one. There was also um, a part, I don't remember which song it was, but uh, I think it was actually still Ragdoll too, or maybe it was Love in an Elevator. But the drummer was hitting the, the ride and then he hit the bell on the ride and it really, really sounded very, very realistic. And that's what you're looking for, right? Like you could sit here and crank speakers and think that they're good, you know? <laughs> but whenever you hear detail in speakers and you really, really feel like that is the sound that it's supposed to be recreating, that's the magic, that's what you want. So really, really kudos to these guys for, for putting in the R&D and making these speakers. So then again, you guys know I love bass. So on Crying, like it's kind of like a groove track to where like you hear that bass. You, you can just imagine the, the bass is back there grooving along with the, uh, the drums as well. But like it, nothing overshines, nothing dips down. It kind of just seems like it's really linear right across the, uh, the board with uh, the sound. So I like the bass, I like the mids, I like the highs. In this room, again, it should be treated, which it still isn't, and now we're getting ready to move. But, um, you know, with all those different waves bouncing around, it kind of, uh, you, you need a little more focus. You need a little to be a little more uh, harnessed. 
but the, the way that these speakers sounded in here was actually really, really impressive. And I would put it up against some of the bigger, <laughs> some of the bigger dogs any, any, any day of the week, but this is not their lowest tier. So they have a couple of more, um, they have one below this and they have a couple more above it, but super impressed with the bookshelves. I mean, I usually, you know, have towers in the room because you expect bigger sound to come from towers. You would expect a bigger speaker to be able to handle more sound. Really, it's just not the case. So whenever you talk, well, whenever you're talking about speakers, you're talking more about, you know, um, quality. So can a, um, can a really nice quality bookshelf speaker give you the, the performance of a tower speaker? Absolutely. I mean, like it's, it's just right across the board. So again, I, I keep saying the same things over and over again. I, I didn't have a whole lot of reservations going into this, uh, th this one because I kind of just like saw the price and I was like, eh, well, maybe they're not that great. Hearing them in person, these Elax are the business, right? I really, really enjoy them. I think you guys will enjoy them too. Well, all right, I think I'm gonna finish this here. So uh, the last thing I'm gonna leave off with are just a few little demos, just to wet your whistle to figure out if you guys like the sound signature, if you guys don't. I mean, it's going through a camera and then onto the internet, and then you're probably gonna be watching this on your cell phone anyway. So some of you guys like demos, some of you guys don't, but I'm gonna put one in there so you guys can make up your own minds afterward, after the fact. But Overall, really, really like these things. Again, like I was talking about, the price of entry is not you know, anything crazy. And I would put this up against a lot of the other big names out there. Like, uh, you know, you got your, your Klipsches. I mean, you got your, your Focals. But I mean, these things, they're, they're really in kind of like a little niche market of their own. And we can sell these things all across the country. So if you guys want some of these, don't hesitate to hit us up. We'd be happy to help you out. Um, we can leave our information right down here, as well as in the description. You guys can pick up the phone or shoot us an email. We'd be happy to help you out with that. But I think that's all I got for you. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.